Okay, let's go ahead and dive into day number four of a monster a day challenge here. Um, so I've been just kind of drawing, working with pencil and ink. Today I want to take it up a notch and I'm going to use some watercolor paint as well. Um, I'm going to do like I did yesterday. I think I'm going to do a monster selfie, the close-up view of a monster, and then um, add some paint to it though. So um, just try something a little bit different today. Okay, so I mean, you could do this any way that you want. If you wanted to use paint, any kind of paint will work. Um, I'm going to use some watercolor paint, and that's going to work really well with the black pens that I have. So let's go ahead and dive in and get started today. Let me switch it over. Okay, so I've got my uh, six by eight inch piece of mixed media paper. I've got my pencil and my eraser, and I've got some of my black pens. I've got some watercolor paint up here, and I've got a cup of water there, and of course I've got some brushes, so I'll just kind of leave that off to the side for, for right now, and I'll just focus on the drawing. So like yesterday, um, I want to I wanna do a selfie, a monster selfie, a close-up view, and um, so I think I maybe even try to do it a little bit closer, a little bit bigger. Uh, I kind of felt like yesterday was a little bit far away and he was a little bit stretched out. So um, maybe I'll, I'll do more of a sketching motion. So I'm just trying to think like, okay, his eye would be about there, another one there. So let's go ahead. I'm going to do a bigger eye here. And then a smaller one there. So I'm kind of putting him off this side. So he's kind of facing um, that way a little bit. And just like yesterday, I kind of like those little like eyebrow type protrusions. Okay, and then think about his mouth coming up. All right, okay, so we'll do the rings again. I, this is just kind of my style of doing the rings. I think yesterday part of it was I was drawing in a very smooth motion, and I tend, but typically I tend to sketch like this. I think that's, I wasn't wasn't super happy with yesterday's monster and I think that was part of it I don't know it just you know you can you could try either way you can kind of sketch it out you can try drawing in a, in a smoother kind of fashion and then the top of his head coming up maybe coming down like that And then I'm just, I just kind of feel like his tongue needs to be sticking out. Okay. So I think just a couple teeth. It's kind of just bouncing all over the place. With this, sometimes I'll draw all the eyes, you know, the entire eye first. Um, I think what I was just really thinking about is like how it fills up the space. I kind of like how he's filling filling the space more than the monster I did yesterday. Okay, and I want a a horn. I think maybe this time this one's going to come out. It's going to curl down. Okay, uh, I think that's okay. I think that kind of gets in me. Oh, maybe I want to put a little bit of an arm in there. Okay, so I like how that kind of breaks up that, that negative space. Um, I'm going to start out just like I did with my other drawings. I'm going to start off with the uh, the pen, I'm going to use that S, that nice thin pen, and I'm going to do my outlining. 
But the difference is going to be is that I'm going to paint after this step. So thinking about what I've been doing over the last few days is that I've been I've been uh, drawing with pencil, outlining with the thin pen, this pen right here that I have right now, and then erasing. So I'm, I'm still going to do that step. I'm, I'll erase all the pencil marks. But then I will paint it. And then once the paint's dry, I'll come back and use more ink. And it's, and it's kind of the same reason. Um, so I erase after this step is so that, you know, if there's any smudging or smearing, or even if some of the ink rubs off a little bit, that it, I can go back over top of it. And so if I were to take all this time and do all the, the ink work and, and put everything in, when I paint, sometimes the paint can be a little opaque and it'll show up on top of the ink. And then other times is that the ink, even though this ink is waterproof um, and it's a good India ink and it's, it's good for inking and painting, I just find that sometimes when you paint over it, it can it can kind of rub away a little bit. I mean, I'm not going to be painting over it like I might in one of my mixed media pieces. So you may have seen me do that where I'll paint over it and really scrub. Um, but it can be enough that it affects the ink. So the less ink I can have on it right now before I paint, Kind of the better. And there my dogs go. <laughs> I think I'll draw his lip all the way in. My wife's home. Guess I should have waited just a little bit longer to start recording. Oh well. That's all right. Okay. I do at this time want to think about, yeah, they go kind of crazy. Um, I do want to think about some um, details. Typically I wouldn't put these in yet, but because I'm going to paint, I do want to have like some of the bigger details. So I do want to have some bigger dots in there, spots on him, maybe some down here. Mm -hmm. All right, so I've got my monster drawn in, um, thinking, yeah, I think just some dots, some spots on him. All right, so I think that's pretty good. Um, a lot of the textures and stuff like I was doing before, I'll come back and do those once I've painted. And just like before, do some erasing. So one thing with the sketching motion is I find that it erases a little bit easier. So that sketching is something that you know, if you're not, if you don't draw a lot, maybe it's something that you, um, you know, just don't do a lot. Is that if you can sketch it and use that like short little sketching motion? For me, it just gives me a lot more control, and then I can also do it lighter and not press so hard. So I kind of based this little monster on a monster that I used um, earlier last week when I first started doing this, and I wanted to I wanted to advertise that I'd be live streaming Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So I made this little visual, and on it is a painting. It's actually an acrylic painting of a monster that's similar like this, with his, with a hooked horn like that. Um, I don't. 
I don't remember exactly what it looked like. I don't have them in front of me, but I was kind of thinking of that. So sometimes, you know, you, you, you do something, you're like, oh, that was really cool. Let me try something similar. Okay. Okay, so again, this, this ink is waterproof. It doesn't bleed whenever I paint over it. I mean, I'm gonna be careful when I paint. Um, so let me talk about the watercolor paint. I have the Core brand, which is made by Golden Paint, so it's a nice high quality, nice high quality paint, and it's a, I like this travel set. Um, now the brushes I have are not are not watercolor brushes. Um, I tend not to use them much. Uh, so they don't hold a whole lot of water, but I'm not painting a big picture, so that's okay. Um, here's the thing, like if I, I have to be really careful because of bleeding, um, wet paint bleeds. So if I'm not careful and I paint two wet colors next to each other, they touch and then they're gonna bleed and fade and blend into each other. So I have to be really purposeful about how I paint. And that's, that's something I gotta really, really think about with this. So I, I kind of have to start planning the colors that I'm going to use. I think I want to use purple as one of the colors. Um, I got a pink in there, so that would be good. I've got blues, reds. So I'm just trying to think like, oh, what color is this? Eye? What are the eyes going to be? What color, you know? So I'm thinking the, the ring around his the outer ring is going to be purple. His spots are going to be purple. <clears throat> but we'll go ahead and just see. I like this brush to do a lot because it's it's got a point on it, and I can get into some smaller areas. But let's just go ahead and and get started with it. All right, so I'm gonna grab some of this, and then oh, it's a little dark. So quickly dip it into the water. Just a little too dark. Still a little too dark. So I'm just kind of painting it flat. I'm not too worried about it being like super round and 3D looking. Too dark. So when it's too dark, I just dip it into the into the plain water. And that helps dilute it a little bit. But like I said, I'm not worrying about painting it so that it is um, rounded or you know three dimensional. Okay, so we got that. Go ahead and do his base of his horns here. Now the one thing is I do want to be careful as I paint, try to stay in the lines, but if I go out, which you may already notice that I have, that's not a big deal because I can fix that with some ink when I'm done. Okay. Um, so I was thinking about this. I was like, oh, what do I, what do I want to do? Um, yeah, I'm thinking I want to do pink for his skin. And maybe what I'll do is I'll hold off because painting around these these circles uh, and dots is really hard. So if I have a darker color, I can always paint the lighter color down, let it dry, and then paint on top of it. So I might try that. 
Um, so I'm going to let that dry. I don't want to paint any pink around because it's close to his eye. Um, so what I want to do is pick something that's not touching the ring or touching this part. And so if I go to his iris, which I think I'll go ahead and use a blue, and then I can paint in his eye. So I'm not going to paint the pupil part in. I'll, I'll do that with ink, but... All right, so now you get to hear my cat meow. Yeah. Yeah, if you ever wonder, we have, I think, six cats of our own, and we have three dogs. So, yeah, you might... I have the door closed, but, of course, I don't have it soundproof. Okay. So what this does is that this blue is, oops, touch the green. Um, this blue is away from the purple. And so what it's allowing is allowing the purple to dry. Okay, so we'll let that dry, and then again, we're just kind of strategically thinking about where things are so that I can paint it. Um, I'm going to do his tongue. So I have a couple different options. So I have this like really uh, magenta-like fuchsia type collar, um, but I think I'm going to use this red, and what I want is it, oops, rinse that out, is I want it to be not that right. Alright, so we'll see. So if I have a lot of water in it, then it comes out a little bit more pink. And not that real bright red. Okay. Just checking to see how dry that purple was. And it seems pretty dry, but then the tongue is is uh, wet. So I've got to think like, okay, I've got this background. I think the purple, eh, you know what? I'm not going to risk it. So not going to risk it, so I'm going to pull in my hair dryer. So a hair dryer is great to have for watercolor. So the paper does sometime uh, bend a little bit. Um, I can flatten that out uh, later. But yeah, so the, the watercolor is dry now, and that's just going to make it a lot easier, and I don't have to be so um, cautious with with the paint because it's gonna it's gonna um, won't bleed as much. So I wanted this magenta color. Get a lot of water, and what I want is just to really paint it on pretty quickly.
So one of the things I might decide after I paint this, I like how bright that is, but you know, it's like, oh, maybe that purple is not dark enough. It's sometimes you, you can go real dark with watercolor. And, uh, you know, when I was putting it onto that white paper, it seemed just really extra dark. So maybe now that there's a little bit of purple, or I mean, there's going to be a little bit more of the color on there, that magenta color, that pink color, then maybe it's not going to feel so dark. I mean, that purple doesn't look very dark next to this bright magenta. And again, I want to work quickly because I don't want that paint to dry. Always find like the lip is a good place to kind of stop. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do with the lip. I could just paint it this this magenta color, but what I, what I might do is I might make it a little bit lighter, and so just add a little bit more water to it. But that's something I don't want to do right now because of the wet magenta that's next to it. It all kind of bleed together, so. Now watercolor is really, it's, it can be difficult to work with, especially to get it even. And so like really thinking about like, oh, it's not even here. And also sometimes it dries. And so it, as it dries, it's a little bit lighter. I'm not the best watercolor painter. Um, I mean, I've used it a lot throughout the years. I use it more in my mixed media work. So just to use it in a piece is always a little challenging for me. So I just try to get it as smooth as I can. And then if it doesn't go completely smooth, there are some other like things I can do to help it out. And we'll see how this goes. Now, one of the things that I didn't intend that intend that I kind of like is the fact that it's lighter up here, and so it does look like there's a lot of uh, um, value. Like, so I, I'm just going to dip my brush in the water, get some water, and brush it on. I can kind of use the brush to wipe away some of the darker paint. If it's if it's a lot of paint, I can uh, take a paper towel and dab it and kind of soak up some of it. What I'm doing is just kind of wiping the extra into the water cup. Sometimes rinsing out the brush to clean the paint out. If I want, I can get a little bit darker value. So I hadn't really intended to do the darker value, but kind of felt like, oh, I felt like there was just an opportunity to be able to do that. So a little darker down here by the, by the mouth. Okay. 
So the nice thing is that this lip creates a nice separation. And so just try to work quickly so that the paint doesn't dry too much. Oops. And if there's any watercolorist out there, you're probably thinking like, what is he doing with that little brush? Yeah, it's just the one that I had grabbed and I like the round point on it, so. All right. Now I have his arm here to do, so I think I, I think I'm pretty good. I can go ahead and do his arm. And like I said, I mean I'm not I'm not super neat, so there's some paint that's getting where it's not supposed to. But that's why I kind of wait until I and now I had some paint on my finger and I got a little bit there, but that's all right. I have a little splatter of red over here. I don't know if you can see that on there. Okay, so while that's drying a little bit, I do have a spot that I can paint that's not touching it. So there's the inner ring in there. I'm going to paint it the same kind of pinky color that I used for the tongue. And just to give it a slightly... Sorry, I had something on my brush. Just, oop, that's not really the color I wanted. Okay, let's go ahead and add some hair dryer to it. So he, he's looking a little rough. Um, I'm not sure if I like that or not, but we'll, we'll kind of keep going with it. Uh, a couple of things I do want to do. 
I, that purple is just not dark enough now. So once once I got that that magenta in there, it just just was not dark enough. Okay, it's looking a little bit better. So I think now I want to go ahead and paint in the uh, dots, the spots on him. So the, that magenta might show through this purple a little bit. But that might be interesting just because it'll give it a slightly different purple color than the rings around his eyes and that little part of the horn. So it'll kind of give it maybe a more of a, a red-violet. So he's looking a little rough right now. Let me get down here. Um, and I'm a little bit out of practice, to be honest, is one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of come and, and try the monsters. I haven't done monsters in a while. Um, so I feel like I'm, I'm kind of finding my footing. But what I, what I notice is that once I add the thicker black lines and go through all that, it's going to it's going to kind of kind of smarten up <laughs> there or rinse out my brush. Now I want to get a little bit of this magenta color and I want to do his lip Ooh, way too dark. Still too dark. So that way, just his lip is a slightly different color than the rest of them, even though it's using that exact same magenta. Let's go ahead and dry this with the hair dryer, and then I'm going to do um, the horn, and then think about the background.
the horn thick and yellow just to give them something a little different. Now in my drawings, I've been leaving the background blank, um, but since I'm adding color, I'm gonna I'm not gonna like, do any kind of recognizable background. But I am gonna put in a little bit of something. I think I'm gonna just use a little bit of this blue, not the blue I use for his eyes, but a different blue. I can't remember the name of the the blue. That's just a not. It's not quite as as bright. And hit it with the hair dryer, and then I'll be ready to add the ink. So um, one of the problems is that it's not flat. So let me show you, before I go any further, I'm gonna show you a way to kind of maybe flatten it a little bit. Um, it might not make it totally flat. You can always put it underneath books or because I'm painting it, sometimes people will, will iron it. But this is a nice heavy 140 pound paper. So it's a pretty decent paper. It's just that a lot of papers will curl and buckle a little bit when they're wet. So what I do is I turn it over on the back, oops and try not to have a lot of paint in my brush so what happens is that it shrinks on the front now because there's some spaces like the eyes and the teeth where I didn't put any paint some of those didn't really shrink and so that's why it's kind of uneven but at least this way I can maybe make it a little bit more even so when I paint the back it actually is going to curl up a little bit more Kind of get worse but whenever i dry it i'm going to use the hair dryer and dry it what will happen is that this side will start to shrink and it'll, it'll lay a little bit flatter but i doubt it'll be perfectly flat so i'm just going to let that sit and soak for a minute you can see it's like all buckled in right now so if i just take it start to dry it
So now I have the problem where it kind of went back the other way. <laughs> so if I flip it over and put a little bit of uh, heat, on, a little bit of heat on this side. And it just flattens out a little bit. It's still not perfectly flat. Um, so what I find is that typically when you use the hair dryer, it really makes it curly because it just dries so quickly. If I were to let it go more naturally um, and dry by itself, it wouldn't be as curled. It's just just that when you heat, when you try to speed up that process. So now I'm just going to take my pens. So these are the same pens that I've been using. Let me get rid of that. And I'm going to kind of work very similar to what I've done. But the nice thing is that I don't have to put all the details that maybe I've done with the others, with, with the drawings that I've done the last three days. But I, I can put details in, so I'm going to thicken lines and then I'm going to think about those same kind of details so with the eyes I like to do the same kind a little bit of curvy lines around the outside some kind of spoke like ray like lines that come in toward the pupil And just already, I mean, that, that little bit just sort of makes the eye pop. So I just kind of feel at this stage, like things just kind of feel a little scruffy. And then this is where I'm like, oh, I went outside of the line, so let me just make that a little bit bigger. Yeah, let me go a little bit bigger. It's okay if that line's a little thicker there. And again, kind of do the same type. You know, and if it's like, oh, well, there's just too much black, well, I can also do, make this a little bit thicker, a little heavier over here. Yeah, so that's something that I kind of think about. Uh, let's go ahead and switch. I'm going to go, I'm going to do some of my bigger lines. I'm going to use my thicker pen like I've done before and really hit some of these outlines. I'm going to just start turning it. Yeah, so since he's even closer and bigger than the monster I did yesterday, I want to really make some of these lines nice and bold and thick. You can really hit that with the, do that with the big thick pen.
You can just see how those lines really start to neaten things up, bring a little bit more polish. And it also helps me hide some of my mistakes. So that gives me the bulk of it outlined. Now over here I have a little bit of a problem where it really went outside the line. So I'm going to make it a little bit thicker and if I don't cover up all of it, that's all right. because there's something I can do. So yesterday, well, I think when I was doing the, the up close one, I did something in the eyes. I just took and just a little bit of lines just around the outside. Kind of helps it look a little bit like like shading and just kind of hides it same thing here with the uh, the tooth you know I got this like a little bit of a, a just a spot and I just Go ahead and do some lines on it. Just kind of hides it.
And I can go around this the spots, make them a little bit neater. That purple's pretty dark, so the lines don't show up super distinctly. the same thing up here. So after I got done with the painting part, you know, I did kind of feel like it was pretty rough. And I was sort of like cringing a little bit. But now that I've really put in the, the thicker lines, I mean, yeah, the paint's still a little rough, but it just, I kind of feel like it works pretty well. I think part of it may have been just the, using too small of a brush. So the next time I'll have to make sure that I use a slightly larger brush. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of feeling like he's done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sign it. And call this guy done. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me for day number four. Um, so I'm going to be live uh, live streaming tomorrow at 1 p.m., so make sure that you tune in then. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of a different take today and uh, doing some painting. Tomorrow we're going to be doing a little bit of a painting as well, so maybe we'll do something like this or maybe do something a little bit different. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, so thank you so much uh, for tuning in, and as always, happy creating, and I'll see you tomorrow.